least 2012 to I'd say about 2018, 2019, I was a full-time YouTuber. I started in the age where you could just turn on a camera and talk about yourself and be yourself and you'd get rich and famous from it. A career that's conducive to the most inflated ego and believe me, leaves you needing therapy. At my height, I had like 1.4 million subscribers just talking about like, hey guys, do you know what sucks about school? And you know, comedy vlogs, things like that. But I have since changed career paths and uh, in case you've been here a while, yes, I still make music. I'd say I pretty much got to know all there is to know about YouTube, especially from those glory days. All the secrets, who liked each other, who hated each other, why we all did and said certain things. So if you want some nostalgia and you want to hear from someone that lived it all, it's not a to tell you the truth about how it all worked and keep on watching and let's take some of the most commonly asked questions on Google about youtubers and let's answer them in this video why do youtubers change video titles because the video wasn't doing very well the chances are that that video initially had a title that wasn't getting a lot of views in the first couple of hours you know it wasn't clickbaity enough and you know the thing is with clickbait it's basically a youtuber having to admit that their content isn't gripping enough. We have to lie. We have to lie in thumbnails. We have to take a snippet of our own video out of context, put it at the beginning. We have to have a catchy title like, she unalived who? I've done it. Your favorite YouTubers have done it. I think Mr. Beast has changed some of his thumbnails like 20 times in a couple of days before. It's all about getting the most views you can in a short amount of time because that is what pushes your video to more people in the algorithm because the algorithm thinks, hey, people are liking this video. People are watching it. Let's send it to more people so that, you know, our advertisers will pay us more money because this is getting more views. I remember a time when it wasn't all dollar, 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 and it was lovely. Sure, I had no money, but I was happy. Why do YouTubers hold microphones? Oh, that fucking stupid thing. Uh, hey guys, so in today's video, uh, I'm actually gonna be talking about how this doesn't help, how holding a lapel mic in my hand just looks fucking stupid. It's all about aesthetic. Unfortunately, just having something clipped on here makes you look like you're a news presenter. There's something about having a microphone in your hand and like being able to sort of gesticulate wildly like this for emphasis that people need these days in this um, short attention span world. It's awful. Don't do this with microphones. I know a lot of it started when people started using like the Apple um, earbuds, you know, like the wired ones with the little microphone here. Um, it was enough to just walk down the road like this, talking to someone uh, and the microphone would be here. But people started taking it and, and talking into it like this doing content and that just caught on. And it looks stupid and it sounds stupid, but we all do it. Except me, because I have a microphone. Ow, so I have a microphone on top of my camera because I'm too old school for this. Why do YouTubers make second channels? Well, I'm certainly qualified to answer this question. I've had second channels, third channels, beauty channels, gaming channels. Every type of content, I made a new channel. The reason for this back in the day was to separate your content out so that people that only liked one style of video wouldn't unsubscribe if your main channel suddenly started having gaming on it, beauty on it. If you start getting really popular on one type of content, like say gaming, but you know, you wanted to branch out into like beauty or lifestyle or vlogs, when you upload those to your, you know, channel that's primarily gaming, there was this fear that the people that subscribe for your gaming would unsubscribe because they didn't want to see that. So people would separate the content out. Um, just diluting their fan bases. Um, and it, it had some advantages, some disadvantages. Don't make 10 channels like I did. You just end up disappointing everyone. And eventually your fans know that they're gonna be disappointed. It's gonna be another project in the bin. Don't do it. Just upload what you want and stop being scared. Stop being dictated by fucking numbers, okay? Everyone's a celebrity these days. Everyone has a phone, everyone has TikTok, you're not special. Those days are gone. Why do YouTubers say unalive? See, I don't know if this is so much a YouTube thing more than it is a TikTok thing, um, but it's the fear of being demonetized. If you say the word or there's a fear that using these terms um, will trigger, because obviously um, YouTube and TikTok and all that, they use auto-captioning now. Um, AI, it's all AI based, like they, they listen to the waveform of your video and then they make their own captions. If those captions detect words that they think, you know, promote violence or, you know, controversial topics, then your video may get demonetized and, you know, you can't earn any money from it. It's also not just a money thing because um, if you get demonetized too many times, then your channel essentially, I'm not going to say the word shadow ban because it's kind of a myth, but you know, like platforms like YouTube and TikTok will stop showing your content to your subscribers because with it being demonetized, YouTube doesn't have an incentive to put your videos out because they want money. They only want to promote channels that they can earn money off of. Hope that makes sense. Why do YouTubers make so much money? <laughs> Sure. You know what? There certainly have been a lot of success stories where some YouTubers have made millions and millions and millions. I was not one of those. I've never been one of those. I have never earned a total of a million pounds in my life. The most I ever earned in one year um, also included my book deal that I had. 
Um, and that year I also ended up spending almost as much as I made um, on creating an album and things like that. So I'm not the best person to talk to about this. However, I was able to pay my rent and, you know, live a comfortable life and go on holidays and things like that based off of being a YouTuber. I'm very, very grateful for those days. Um, I had a really, really good... I think my lights are trying to play me off. Hey! I had a really unforgettable 20s you know, like from like the age of 20 to 30, um, that I never would have experienced without YouTube and, you know, being able to earn money from my channel. My CPMs, which is the the rate, like the money you get per 1,000 views, was, was relatively high because I didn't do anything wrong with my channel. Um, I wasn't demonetized. I didn't do any controversial videos or anything like that. I used to get quite a lot of sponsorships back in the day. I don't really get sponsorships anymore, but I also have a life outside of YouTube, so there's that. But YouTubers make so much money because they get views and they have an audience that will, you know, will follow them. If a YouTuber with a good dedicated fan base uh, does a sponsored video and they say, click here below, use this VPN, you know, it's amazing. Look at this magic spoon shit. And their subscribers follow them. You know, they build up a reputation of being someone that brands want to work with and they'll get paid to advertise more products. So I know the question is probably more like, why do they make so much money? Like it's a, like it's like, uh, sort of thing. Um, but I'm not really one that, you know, can really comment on that because I didn't, you know, I didn't hit the big time. I, I lived comfortably for a while and I'm very, very grateful for that. But it's not like I sat on my butt doing fuck all, okay? You, videos do not take five minutes to make. But I'm not gonna go down that route because that's, that's a tricky one and people are gonna start calling me entitled again. I don't like that. How do YouTubers edit their videos? With a video editor, of course. I started out on iMovie back in 2012. I moved up to Final Cut Pro in 2013. I still use Final Cut Pro. In fact, I still use my MacBook from 2013. Um, it's only just had a new battery in it. Everything up until about two weeks ago was the original um, stuff in this. I've looked after it. I look after my stuff. But yeah, Final Cut Pro, um, Adobe Premiere is another one people use. I think CapCut have done like a desktop editor now. But a lot of content nowadays is, you know, for a mobile. It's all like shorts and TikTok and things like that. Um, and you can vid you can edit those videos on your phone very, very easily. Um, it's never been easier to to find a good editing program and editing programs have never been better than they are now. How do YouTubers pay taxes? The ones who want to pay taxes and want to, you know, abide by the law, get a good accountant who knows what they're doing, who knows how to file these things. I realize that makes it sound like I'm talking like hiding money, like doing an offshore thing. I didn't mean that. I just meant someone that's competent, who knows what they're doing, <laughs> who knows actually how to file things. I don't know what other people do, but um, I, I had to get an accountant uh, a couple of years in. Um, because I was very much out of my debt. But the same as anyone else, really, I suppose. The same as anyone else that's self-employed or owns a company. A lot of YouTubers start companies, uh, limited companies, because you pay a little bit less tax than if you are self-employed. But that's, that's really kind of a vague question. Maybe some people don't, you know, but not me. I'm a good girl. Do YouTubers get paid if I skip ads? Um, they do, but not as much. Or at least that's what I remember. That's how I remember it being a few years ago. You could always choose to put um, skippable ads or non-skippable ads in your videos. A few years ago, if you saw like a 20 minute video and there was a non-skippable ad in the middle, that YouTuber put that there on purpose. Now, I don't think YouTubers have that choice anymore. I think that was taken away from them. And there's more ads on YouTube than fucking ever these days. And I understand why people's interest in YouTube is dying out because you can't fucking escape ads unless you get premium. I got premium on my uh, mobile phone contract and that runs out. I got two years of YouTube premium. Uh, a couple of years ago and it's about to run out and I don't know if I can live without YouTube Premium anymore because they've made it, they've made this site so unusable without it. Everything's so, like, everything's a monthly fucking subscription now. It's painful. It's hard out here. But yeah, um, if you click skip ad, um, then YouTube does get, the YouTube does get money, but not as much as if you watch the whole thing through. I couldn't tell you the percentage. I'm sure that's changed, you know, but it's, it's a really minimal amount. Do YouTube get paid for likes? <laughs> no. And at least not like directly, you know, you don't get paid per every like you get or anything like that. Um, the only way to describe it is, you know, if, if you like a video, then it tells the algorithm to recommend the video to more people. The more people see it, the more ads will be running, um, and, you know, then, then they get more money that way. Um, so that's why YouTube say things like, oh, like and subscribe, because all of these little clicks that you do while the video is playing, YouTube logs those, okay? This, this data, it takes that data from your computer, like what you're doing. Like, are you watching the whole video? Have you skipped to a certain part? 
You know, have you left a comment? Have you liked? Have you disliked? All of that's fed into the machine to tell YouTube whether they want to send that video to more people or not. Which YouTubers live in Brighton? I was one of those for a bit. Um, it was like a rite of passage in the UK. Everyone that, you know, made it or wanted to make it as a UK YouTuber lived in Brighton. And there was a time in my life where I was like, hey, you know what? I feel like branching out, leaving Basildon, my hometown. So I moved where some of my friends were and, you know, it was amazing. I loved Brighton. Uh, it was very expensive to live there, like the rent and parking, all the bills and everything were ridiculous. Where I live now is cheaper than Brighton was then. So, but you know what? It was really fun and it was small. It was a tight knit community. Everyone knew each other. Everyone hung out with each other. Sorry, I had to readjust my wig if you couldn't tell. Um, ugh, I've had this on too many hours now. Oh, it's all, it's all going wrong. Which YouTubers have quit in 2024? A lot of them. And that's actually gonna be a topic of one of my videos that's gonna be coming up. I'm not gonna film it for a little while, but you know, as someone that's left YouTube quite a few times, you know, here and there, I mean, this is, this is one of the first videos I've made in like three months or so. I understand why people are feeling the burn and, you know, just not wanting to do it anymore. So if you want an insight into that from someone that has, you know, left the platform a few times, let me know. I'd like to make that. And I promise I won't make it all like, wow, wow, the views are down. There's there's a bit more to it. When do YouTubers, when do YouTubers get a plaque? Not like plaque on their teeth. Most of them have that. So I think the rules are pretty much still the same. You get a plaque at 100,000, like a silver play button. I have about four of those somewhere. You get a gold play button at a million. I have one of the original ones that's about this big. Um, still in my house. It's under the bed because it's so big. Now it's like a nice little cute thing you can put on the wall. Back then it was huge because getting a million subscribers was no like small feat back then. Um, back in my day it was quite an achievement to get a million subscribers. Now it's fuck all. And I think what was the diamond play button 10 million subscribers I think? Which is also kind of fucking easy for people to do these days. There's like so many channels that have like 10 million. What the fuck? I remember when they were first being given out. I got to hold one once. And that was cool. And yes, they are fucking heavy. Very heavy things. Honestly, it felt like it felt like the same weight as like two two like big like house bricks. It was cool though, but I have really clammy hands, so I just got fingerprints all over it, and then I tried to run off with it and um didn't work. Well, those are pretty much all the good questions I can get from Google autocorrect. But if you have any other questions about, you know, the YouTube life, especially back in the days when I would make videos and then do kind of all right, talking like 2012 to 2018 sort of time. If you have any questions about those days, you know, or if you like the dirt on which YouTubers I liked, which ones I didn't, which ones I got on with, which ones were genuine, all that stuff. I don't care anymore. I have no one to impress. I don't have to pretend to be friends with anyone and this isn't my main source of income so I can say whatever the fuck I want. If you'd like to see those videos or if you have any other suggestions, leave them down below. If you'd like to support my music career, my Spotify, of which I earn, you know, pennies, will be down below. I released an EP last October, if you haven't listened to that. Or if you want to go down memory lane, listen to some of my older stuff, that's all on there too. I'm also doing some UK shows, perform my music. I'm doing a show in Birmingham, May 3rd. And there's some more dates in October as well. It's called the Past and Present Tour. It's the Eras Tour. I'm performing music from all my EPs, all my albums, not Google+, don't fucking say it. But if you'd like to come along for old time's sake, or maybe you've just got really great taste, then the links for everything you need will be down below. Thank you so much for watching, and as always guys, I shall catch you later.